Yeah, welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live Saturday Night Edition. <laughs> Why you always got some wild hat on, man? Don't hate, man. Every man, time I, you first start, of all, you got some wild hat on. I, man. I gotta show support, man. The Navy midshipman, you know, put a beating on the Air Force today, thirty-four okay, to okay. seven. So you all know, right, we, right. they undefeated five and zero. Oh, so I gotta represent, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, I respect that. Army's five and oh two, so you know, number one in the number one in the conference. So yeah, too bad you don't you don't you don't put on I don't, I don't what you, know what you don't listen. I'm I'm good for them as long as they're not playing the Irish, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they play Notre Dame, then you know that is what that is, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. hope the army smack Notre Dame, boy. No, that's not that'll, gonna happen, man. That'll be great. I want to see your not face going like to happen. Everything's gonna change for you, B. <laughs> You're like, man, no, man, it's army, go army, you know, <laughs> hydrate, hydrate, <laughs> drink water, drink water. <laughs> oh, man. All right. For those of y'all uh, just checking in, actually, nobody's checking in right now. So we're just going to chill for a few minutes and we're going to kick it till um till we get a little more uh, traffic in the chat. But um, what's good, fellas? What's happening? G, what's good? Cooler, man. Maintaining it. Bicking back and being bull. What's it look like? He, he ain't got he ain't got the stunners on today. Hey, hey. Oh yeah, he uh he tried <laughs> Shannon Sharp me and shit. Ain't <laughs> hey, nobody tried Shannon What's Sharp. What's good, Snee? He wrote an email to corporate uh, for me. <laughs> hey, we, <laughs> hey man, we got we got to let the people know, man. This is a serious <laughs> podcast to be taken seriously. <laughs> Hey, said he went. He went back to his locker and he saw that letter on the table uh, on, the, on his locker. He got report to the got front that, office. Got that fine real quick. Uh, uh man, what's up, Sneed? Salam, brother. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Always good to see you in here. Um, we're just gonna uh, take a few minutes here and uh, see if we get a little bit of traffic in, and then we go ahead and start going, man. Got got oh, definitely have some interesting things to talk about. So you know, um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, man. Freaking Saturday afternoon, man. It's been raining on and off all day, man. How the weather up there in BMO G? Amazing. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's real nice. Right. Say the same. Yeah, right. We might have another storm coming through. I saw that um come across my phone, so we'll see. I heard. I heard it was. Yeah, they said all the Florida on the target. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The whole thing, the whole state of Florida is under the. Under yeah, the radar. yeah, that that cone is big, man. I was yeah. like, "What's going on here?" I was like, "Damn." So we'll see what happens, man. I can, I can, I can deal with some. Uh, it is a fantastic discussion. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I can deal with some rain, but um, you know, when it starts really getting crazy, I don't know. Nino, Nino, what's good, my brother? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Thank you for always being in here supporting us, man. Nino, man, good thing we're not finna talk about you know who today, so I'm not even gonna bring it up. You know it's gonna come up briefly though, because we gotta talk about no, the no, no, no. Keep him separated. He didn't play. Why not? He didn't play. Of course he who, did. Who cares? He LeBron didn't James didn't play. No. LeBron James didn't play. No, no he didn't play. He didn't yes, play. He did. No, he didn't. He was on yes, the floor. That boy was in street clothes. What you talking about? No, LeBron James. Now let played. me know you didn't watch the game. No, LeBron James played. Bronny played. <laughs> I'm messing with, is he not LeBron James? I'm, I'm messing no, with you. No, okay. I'm about to say, I know what. <laughs> I was waiting for you to catch on. I was like, yeah, I was like, LeBron James played. No. LeBron James did. played. LeBron James Jr. played. Yes, LeBron that is James correct. Jr. That is correct. JR played. <laughs> no, I was I'm, just like, I'm like, Bruce can't be serious right now. Like, really? <laughs> like, no, LeBron James. You saw that whole game really and you did. didn't see not one Bron highlight. <laughs> 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 nah, man, you, you know got, you got me with that one. That yeah, was you know, I'd be dumbing out sometimes, man. You know, uh, yeah, that was a good have, one. I don't have a whole lot of sense, man. <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's that army medicine they be shooting in your man, veins. That's, that's at not what that is, man. No, yeah, that's, man. That's not all, that all them shots they gave you, <laughs> man. You got the same shots, man. You know, we Bro. all got the same shots. So let, let me ask you a question because I never What's did up, ask this up. question to anybody in the army. So did y'all want like? Did they make it the hall of shots for y'all too? 
No. Like when y'all walk through, like they made it look like it was a gauntlet. It was like a gauntlet when you go into boot camp, right? Mm-hmm. And you walk through, like you got your sleeves up, you roll your mm-hmm. sleeves up, and it's. <laughs> no, it was. It was. Like just... No, it, Yo, it was crazy. Guy. Nah, it was nuts. It was nah. nuts. No, nah, we went and got our shots. The only thing that messed me up when we came out from getting the shots, we got back in formation. And um, remember this G drill song did a uh, he did a, a open ranks or no, not open ranks. He did a, a half right face. And we like, what could we possibly have done that we were about to get smoked out here? Just <laughs> <from the shot? laughs> but really, right. He just made us do the 10 push ups just to, you know, work the shot through your arm a little bit. So it didn't like bubble up right under your skin. Oh, I was really thinking, like, what could we possibly have done? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not that they needed a reason, but, you know. <laughs> hey, y'all got them shots halfway? You already oh know. God, God. <laughs> Dang it, man. <laughs> good times, good times. I'll right, tell you, man. Listen. Hey, Navy ain't no better, bro. We, we got the, they do the peanut butter. I believe it's a, uh, not penicillin. What is that? I forget what shot that's called, but they call it the peanut butter shot, right? And it's, mm-hmm. you get shot in the, you know, in the, in the rear, I'm going to say rear to keep it clean. Mm-hmm. Right. And once you're done, like it's one of the worst shots that you mm-hmm. guys could get. Right. Like I'm talking, all you hear is, oh, <laughs> on the glute. like when, when these folks, when these folks are taking it pause, but mm-hmm. uh, I mean, everything's going to sound pause worthy, but <laughs> anyway, after you're done, you know what I mean? You, okay. you, you put your uniform back on, you put everything uh-huh. back up. And they make these folks go sit Indian style on the hard <laughs> floor, G. Damn. On the hard floor. So mind you, I'm over here waiting my turn. I'm like, damn, I'm hearing these folks like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, the women yeah, screaming, yada, 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 yada. So me, lucky, lucky me. They called. They was like, all right, Bass, walk up. They saw I had my red dog tags. I'm allergic to penicillin. Okay. It was like, all right, go over there to the counter. I'll go over to the counter get these you know they had me a subscription and they tell me to go sit down i'm like wait i ain't got to take the shot so i'm like mm-hmm. all right cool man i watch everybody just like they they're trying their hardest like <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we ain't get that trying to sit down and lean on one uh, side man bro it, it uh, was torturous for him bro it was funny for me to watch now. but right. man yeah bro <laughs> <laughs> crazy oh oh man all right well let's let's go ahead and get started fellas let's go ahead and get started before we bore the people with all these wild military stories and whatnot. All the ones oh, man, we, we didn't did do a military show, man. <laughs> yeah, we need to have a story, military bro. segment one day. You, know, what? You, know. you already know it. You already know it, G. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. All right, so uh, we got some good topics for you all today. Um, obviously, we got uh, some, some good uh, NFL games coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, two main ones that we really want to get into a little bit is uh, Pittsburgh and Dallas, as you can see in the thumbnail, and the Ravens and the Bengals. Those are huge. Uh, we got the notification, not the notification, but we were um, made aware that Derrick Rose is going to be retiring. He's after 16 years in the league. And uh, so we're going to we're going to talk about that. Most specifically, is he a Hall of Famer? So that should be interesting. And um, this the third topic is a topic I've. I've been trying to avoid it for a while because it's got so many tentacles and really it's a rather exhausting topic, but it is a huge topic in, in the sports world. So it's something that um, I think I'm going to have to get into. And uh, so <laughs> it's going to be interesting. But, um, yeah, we're going to talk about the the drama in the WNBA and Caitlin Clark and all that good stuff. And, we, you know, we've talked about Caitlin Clark on this channel here before, but it's just I don't even know, man. It's a lot to get into. It's a lot to get into. So. We are going to, we're going to talk about all that. But before we get started, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't i've been thinking about for a long time and I want to say I've been I've been I've been ducking it. I've been avoiding it. The WNBA topic, Mm -hmm. because it just. 
like even today when I was trying to prep it and I was thinking about all the different things, I was like, this is really freaking exhausting. It really is. It's just so much. And that's why I titled it what I titled it um, on the thumbnail, WNBA drama, right? On, on the rundown here. And hmm, it's it's so much, I don't even know where to start, but let's do this. Yeah. Um, bef before we even start with the WNBA, let me take you back, right? And I'm going to take you back to April of 1979. All right, bear with me a minute. April of 1979. Anybody know what was special in the basketball world in April of 1979? I wasn't alive. I wasn't alive. I wasn't alive. I wasn't alive. <laughs> oh, damn. I'm, I'm the only one that was alive. Okay. I mean, obviously, I didn't see it, but all right. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <I'm> please. <laughs> but what was relevant in 1979? <laughs> I'm going to do your homework, man. I'm going to tell you because obviously I didn't see it either. But in April of 1979, the most watched college basketball game of all time took place. Okay. Michigan State Spartans versus the Indiana State Sycamores for the national championship, featuring da -da -da, the one and only Irvin Magic Johnson, point guard for Michigan State, and Larry Bird, the small forward for uh, Indiana State. You and so, I, can I pause you for a second? Absolutely. The fact that you put Magic's names first. Yes. I'm proud of you, bro. Thank you. Proceed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know how I feel about magic. Yeah, you know I, that. I like that though. Yeah, you know, yeah. absolutely, Larry Bird as well, man. All right, absolutely, make yourself to yeah. All right, go ahead. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, nah, magic. Me too. <laughs> man, you gonna make me you gonna make me tear up, man. Magic, <laughs> man. Like, man, he put magic names for no, no. Magic. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and plus, story. he was the winner, right? Yeah, he was. There you go. Yeah, so, he was. you know, right? So, so. Magic Johnson and Michigan State play Indiana State and Larry Bird. And um, uh, that, to this day, is the most watched college basketball game of all time. And obviously, Michigan State wins the national championship. And both of these guys go on to enter the National Basketball Association and proceed through their rivalry to literally save the league. And then, of course, Michael Jordan comes later, takes it to a whole nother level. And then, of course, you got your Shaqs and your Kobe's and your LeBron James's and so on and so forth, right? Cool. Mm -hmm. But why am I bringing up Magic and Bird? Why am I bringing those guys up? And we haven't talked about this, so you don't know where I'm going with this. But the reason hey, that I'm... Go, go say ahead. again? No, no I, I, was, I thought you was making, a, making us guess. I was going to say uh, rivalry, viewership, drama. Yeah, all, all that, all that. As a matter okay. of fact, yes, all all that plays plays a big role. What, what we yeah. got in the chat here? What does it say? Um, not sure how long he lasts in the NFL, but it's tempting in the first round. Oh, okay, he was commenting on the kid from uh, Boise State. Um, now nah, you don't take him first round if you if you can get him in the yeah, second. Not a running back. Do that. No, no higher than second. Anyway, all right. So Magic and Bird, right? They come into the league, and so if I'm not mistaken, how old is the NBA now? About seventy eight years old, right? They just had the seventy-five three years, ago years about three years ago. Yeah, right. So they're about seventy-eight years old. So that means the NBA has been around since since the nineteen forties. Obviously, we know in the sixties you had the great um, uh, you had the great Bill Russell Celtics teams. Uh, you had um, what is it in the late forties, early fifties? You had the great Minneapolis Lakers teams, the predecessors to your guys, mm -hmm. um, and you know you had the great St. Louis Hawks teams, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And then uh, later on, of course, you have Wilt and the Sixers, Wilt and the Warriors, et cetera, Wilt and the Lakers, obviously great Lakers teams all throughout pretty much every decade. They were great at one point or another um, and so on and so forth. But in the 1970s and in the 60s, like the NBA wasn't that popular, especially in the 1970s. The prevailing sentiment was what the league was too black, too full of drugs, et cetera, et cetera. The league wasn't that popular now. Does that mean that there weren't great players in the NBA who were doing their thing? That's not what that means, right? There were fantastic players in the NBA who were doing their thing. But that doesn't mean that it still had the mainstream appeal that people wanted to see. And I promise I'm, I'm going to get you there. I'm going to tell you where I'm going with all this. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that there weren't great players in the league that – um uh, excuse me, that doesn't mean there weren't great players in the league and that the league didn't have a good product. But for whatever reason, it wasn't what people wanted to see. It wasn't that popular. So now we get back to 1979. We get back to Magic and uh, Bird. And what do they do? They become a catalyst to the NBA, right? So a catalyst is a noun defined as an agent that provokes or speeds 
significant change or action. Okay. So Magic and Bird are a catalyst, basically a rocket ship that the that straps the league onto their backs, takes it into the stratosphere. The reason I'm bringing this up is because for years we've been hearing the WNBA players, WNBA media, hey, we need more attention. This is a great product. We need more attention. We got great players over here. We need Nobody more money. That. Right. Well, yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the money piece. Like they, <laughs> they, 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 should, they, should, they should have shut up on that. That's just dumb because I, I'll get to that. But, you know, so you have all that going on. You have all that complaining happening, right? You have the WNBA saying, uh, men, you need to do a better job of supporting us. I'm like, really? This is your game. How about you get on the women to support it more? Because men are supporting you. That's why your league is still around. But I digress. The point is, we've been hearing all of that throughout these years. Now, I am a player. Sorry, I'm not a player. I'm a guy who literally, I used to work in foot action on the corner of, uh, what is this, around the year 2000, on the corner of uh, 34th Street and 8th Avenue in Manhattan, in, in, in Manhattan, New York, which is one block over from Madison Square Garden where the Liberty played, right? And so I have been to New York Liberty games back then. I, I remember when the WA, WNBA first came into existence, I used to watch, uh, you know, the Rockets with Cynthia Cooper and uh, so uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Cooper and... um. Uh, geez, what's the other young Cheryl Swoops? Fair Swoops, yeah, and you know, okay. that team that won four straight. And then I remember seeing Lisa Leslie, and then going for like I said, I, I went to some games at the garden, uh, and then I remember going forward. Um, I remember watching Maya Moore, I was a big fan of hers, right? I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'm a WNBA historian, I'm a WNBA aficionado, all that. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that, right? I know I'm talking, but I'm really, I'm, I'm getting somewhere, I promise. So, the thing is this. There were a lot of people, I think, like that and not necessarily purists, but people who just going to watch the game, what have you. So now back to Catalyst, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese enter the WNBA and they become what? Catalysts for the league to go to new places. Yeah, The league popular, well, Caitlin Clark's popularity explodes and it brings in a whole bunch of new fans. Now, many of them may not necessarily be basketball fans. Many of them may not necessarily be women's basketball fans, but what they are Caitlin Clark fans. And at the end of the day, you always have a degenerate sector of any demographic. So you got some that are blatantly homophobic. You have some that are blatantly uh, racist and they're, you know, tweeting and emailing and, and saying all type of vile stuff, which is absolutely terrible. And in no way do we condemn that. Right. Absolutely However, not the popularity of the league has increased a great deal, right? And I got some numbers on that that I'm, that I'm going to bring up later, but the popularity of the league has increased a great deal. And here's my thing. The, the WNBA players, the WNBA management, the WNBA media has been crying for attention for all these years, but it seems like they only want the attention that they want, the positive attention. And nowhere in life can you get one thing without the other. There's yin and yang, there's left and right. There's heads and tails, right? Nowhere in life can you get attention, but it's all good all the time. So did you not expect that with a market increase in attention, that some negativity was going to come with that? You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like that, that, so that, that's the first thing, right? So, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give some numbers here, right? And it's not all Caitlin Clark, but if we're real, she's a huge part of it. And, and what's frustrating to me, you have a lot of people who, and realistically, a lot of black people who I, I, I'm going to say this, they feel that in order to be pro black, we have to attack Caitlin Clark for what some of her degenerate fans are doing. It doesn't have to be that way. Right. Because that's not her. She's not asking them to do that. Right. We can't blame that on her because her some of her fan base are behaving in this way. That's not good. Right. But anyway, for the regular season, nationally televised WNBA games average six hundred fifty seven thousand viewers the highest audience in 24 seasons televised games with Clayton Caitlin Clark's Indiana fever team averaged 1.18 million viewers compared to 394,000 for all other games. There's a bunch of other stats I could read you. I'm not going to do that, but the fact is a rising tide lifts all boats. Now yep. there, there's a lot to it, but I'm going to take a break right now. And from what I started with, I'm going to get some of your, some of your thoughts on this, but basically give me some feedback on, um, 
why there seems to be just this like how do how do you have some people who are um blaming Caitlin Caitlin Clark for the behavior of some of her fans some of her fans and then secondly how is it that you feel how do you think the WNBA could have been asking for more attention all this time but not understanding that with good attention also comes bad you want to start transformer that's tough um that's tough uh to blame someone for actions that i haven't shown right mm -hmm. so if i'm if i'm going out here and i'm a model citizen you know i'm a real estate agent here in jacksonville florida i'm a personal trainer here in jacksonville florida and you see nothing but outstanding you know help to the community and things like that but the people that support me are all let's just you know call spade a spade here pro black f the white f that mm -hmm. other side and mm -hmm. that that type of that type of formula but you see me i'm very neutral when it comes to racial uh racial belief i yeah. myself am, am a little mixed so mm -hmm. i support i will support both sides but my the actions from my fans mm -hmm. now are predicated on me right how am i to blame right how can you sit here and blame someone for for said actions of the community uh, i mean not the community but the the fanship of what they're coming from I, I don't mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. I don't I don't right. I think they're putting Caitlin Clark in a in a spotlight that she shouldn't be when she mm -hmm. she's going out there and playing basketball, man. Mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark, she's not in the media like that. Uh in a sense to where she's garnering for attention. She's very to herself, she's very to just you know pure basketball. I've seen a couple mm -hmm. of skits um that she's done, you know, on Saturday Night Live, but that was post uh uh, WNBA draft, you know, coming off of uh, you know, two back to back years to where you made um the the count uh, of the the championship. So mm -hmm. and you're the next you're the next thing up as far as the WNBA is concerned to boost to boost numbers. I I just don't see how we're gonna put anything on Caitlyn. It's unfair to her that I mean mm -hmm. that's just the way her fan base is. I mean that goes some that goes to show you that make sure we're fair with that. Some a percentage yes, of her some, fan yeah, base. some some of her fan base. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. thank you for correcting me. Um Absolutely. that some of her fan base was but in a sense I mean we kind of know that that's out there, right? Yeah. There's yeah. there's certain states, certain cities, I believe we had this conversation the other day to mm -hmm. where you know racism yeah, is did. still a big thing. Mm -hmm. It's still a big thing in that community, but it's just not addressed because it's not publicized the way it is. You know, mm -hmm. you do have communities like that. You have community in as far as a homophobic community, you have, you know, uh, uh, states that still don't allow that still, you know, frown upon that. There's still certain laws there that they just don't agree with. But you can't I, I'm not sitting here going to sit here and necessarily point the blame at Caitlin Clark. I look mm -hmm. at the, the aspect and like you had numbers. I had similar numbers here. I'm looking at all the NCAA tournaments um, mm -hmm. prior to prior Absolutely. to Caitlin Clark. Yeah. The highest I've seen in the last five to six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, a whole lot of years, right? The highest mm -hmm. viewership was 4.1 million. Mm -hmm. 4.8 4. million. I said, I stand corrected. Mm -hmm. 4.8 million. 2023, Iowa plays South Carolina. 5.6 million. Mm -hmm. championship game 9.9 .9 million all right, right that was a championship game 2024 iowa plays yukon 14.4 million mm -hmm. south carolina plays iowa 18.8 .8 million mm -hmm. what did you expect wnba right what, what was the expectation i think the maybe they weren't prepared was prepared for that exponential level of growth that's the only thing i can come up with yeah they wanted it but they weren't prepared for it to happen the way it did yeah, and it it, it, it it hit him like a bonfire out of hell. I have I have mm -hmm. just a little bit more numbers, and I'm I'm gonna yeah. leave it at that. Um, and her first NBA game in the WNBA playoffs, Indiana Fever Caitlin Clark helped generate 1.8.1.84 million viewers for Game One against Connecticut Sun. The Connecticut mm -hmm. Sun, the most watched WNBA playoff game since the 2000 WNBA Finals. A few days later, in an elimination game between the Fever versus Sun. The, the ESPN, I believe, is what they tried to say, averaged 2.54 million viewers for the most watched NBA game since 2000. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're getting what you want. You're getting so what you want. You're getting what you want, right? You're getting the viewership. Mm -hmm. Everything is is going in a trajectory where you've been begging for for years, right? Yes. And that's hugely yeah. thanks to Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. And can, can we be, can we be, well, so let me say this. 
it's not just Caitlin Clark. Obviously, she's a major yeah, part that's a huge. of the yeah, growth. Yeah, just a huge part. Yeah. Right, right. So we got to be fair to all those other all those other ladies who've been putting in work and been grinding. Correct. And Asia you know, Wilson. And, yeah, oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to show you some Asia Wilson because she's oh, a no, monster. No. Oh, but, absolutely. But like, and and that's, why, yeah, go ahead. that's why I made sure to bring up a catalyst earlier. Because just yeah. because Caitlin Clark is the catalyst for the rapid expansion and growth of the WNBA doesn't mean that there weren't tremendous players and tremendous basketball being played in that league prior to her arrival. And I think that's where maybe people get this whole thing conflated. But, um, G, uh, what are your thoughts on this? And then I got some more stuff. All right. So, um, first of all, really good piece, guys. Y'all did an amazing job. Um, it's hard to follow when y'all kind of hit almost every angle. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, man, shut up. Let me talk. This WNBA <laughs> thing, man. But um, I look at it, I think part of it is political, right? Like, um, mm -hmm. the, Part of it is definitely political. You look at yeah. them standing up and uh, protesting against Trump, right? And then, the, then it fizzled out for a while. And then you got the Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese. Shout out to Caitlin Clark for winning the, you know, the, the rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. she had what something like sixty-six votes or something like that. I think sixty-six out of sixty-seven. One vote, and yeah. the other vote was Angel Reese. Angel yeah. Reese, Angel Reese should have got so, more than that, but anyway. Well, absolutely. But I mean, they, again, this stuff does still revolve around politics as well, mm -hmm. um, especially when you're talking about the WNBA and, you know, women's rights. Right. And so, mm -hmm. you know, Great point. we look at look at, um, you know, the the crazies, right? The trumpeteers or whatever you want to call it. The crazies, mm -hmm. we won't call them crazies, right? The people that uh, send death threats and show at people houses. The Caitlin crazies, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and, and you know, they kind of have the same resume as the, you know, some of those guys that stormed the the, the Capitol the insurrection, right? Mm -hmm. January 6th insurrection. Maybe that's that's a, that's a reach. But mm -hmm. from the same, you know, middle America, right, type deal where um, they, they, I, my last point is, is I don't think these girl these women get paid enough to have to deal with some of the things that they're going through. Um there's a disparity in pay, uh, but nothing is worth your life, right? Not your occupation. If it's the dribble of ball and somebody's right, right. To, you know, you should at least, if, if, if that's the case, then somebody should at least be able to have a full security, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going you to be in danger and you're Angel Reese or, you know, any any professional football, play, mm -hmm. I mean, basketball player, um, you, you should have some some level of security, some something there to, to, um, protect you right because mm -hmm. you are an ambassador to that league mm -hmm. um but they made so much money off these two young ladies man that you know that's the thing that's not being um, captured they made a lot of money and a lot of money crumbs, and they pay them crumbs i'll, I'll, I'll get to that yeah. okay all right the biggest okay. increase they ever seen but um well maybe not right um but they did they did just ink a, a deal tv deal I think it was worth like two point two billion or something like that. I might be wrong. You got the numbers in front of you. They oh. got um they got a they got a part of um I think I think the number is right, two point two bill, but that comes from the T V deal that the NBA got, that seventy six billion dollar T V deal. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, what what more can we say about this topic except that, you know Oh, I got more. <laughs> Trust why do you uh -oh. why do you Stand have by. to what yeah. why do you I mean we Man, it's stuff, man. It's it's wild, man. My daughter plays basketball. Right. She plays high school ball, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, she plays soccer as well. And, and mm -hmm. I look at like what she's walking into with when you say drama, right? Mm -hmm. um, that happens from the time that I'm gonna stop right there because I'm across. Yeah, the yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. So let me say this, right? I, I appreciate both of y'all sentiments, and I agree with the majority of it. But gee, I'm gonna tell you this, and it may be unpopular. I'm so sick of hearing people complain that WNBA players don't make enough money. Correct. It's crap. It really is. And this is in no way denigrating their skill level. This is in no way denigrating the work that they put in. This is in no way denigrating the quality of basketball that they put on out there. Because many times, and I've said this, you can actually go back on my channel, whether it's y'all two or anybody listening. I, I did an interview with, uh, um, uh, man, uh, Derek Gibbs, who was the former head coach of the uh, University of North Florida Ospreys uh, women's basketball team, 
who I, I covered when I was in school there. And we've talked about these different things. And many times the women's ball game is more fundamentally sound than the men's game, right? They execute better. They run their stuff better. They have better fundamentals. Why? Because when stuff breaks down, they're not just relying on athleticism, right? So they have to know what they're doing more so than their male counterparts. Now that said, I, I want to make sure that I give credit to the work that these, these women put in. I want to give credit to their skill level, to their effort, to their determination, to their love of the game. Now, all that said, How can you say and that? And it's nonsense you know, when, when anyone girls, complains about WNBA players. We just think two girls money. make more money in college than they did in the WNBA. Like, how can you say that? Well, that, that doesn't. <laughs> they made well, more that, money that, in, 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 I'm in about college. To break it down, because that money comes from a totally different source, right? So let's watch this now. WNBA has been in existence for 28 seasons now, correct? What business do you know that can last 28 years, never turn a profit, and still be in existence? Do you know why the WNBA is still in existence? The same people complaining that men should do a better job of supporting the WNBA. The NBA carried the WNBA and still does. For all of the attention and higher level of income, that the WNBA is has received and will receive for this season, they're still not going to turn a profit yet. They may next year, they may the year after that. Cool. But what business you know that's going to be in the red for 28 years and still be a viable business? If not for the NBA carrying them, the WNBA no longer exists. So one, they got to stop this. Men need to do a better job of supporting the WNBA because clearly, clearly in the stands. Clearly in the stands. That, <laughs> well, not even just in the stands, but yes, you're right. But not even just that. If not for the WNBA, the WNBA been done. So we got to be 100 on that. And and two, um, the, the other problem is that this, you know, um, the, the league, uh, excuse me, the, the league just, it wouldn't even be there anymore. So with that, the business is consistently in the red. It doesn't draw enough money to pay the women players more. Precisely. Like this, you don't have to be an economist or a financier to understand that. That's very basic. As the yeah. game grows and as the money continues to increase, they will get more money. Not saying they don't deserve it. Deserving it and getting it, two different things. They deserve it. Again, for their skill level, for their effort, for their hard work, for their love of the game, everything that they give to the game of basketball, they deserve it. I totally got it. But it's just not there to pay them more. So we got to stop this foolishness of listening to this narrative. WNBA players need to get paid more. Now, um, back to the original topic, think, right? So yeah, I don't go ahead. think you should. I think from a college perspective, should be you should have to worry about. Oh man, if I get drafted this year, right? Like if I get drafted, I'm gonna lose. I don't even know what the salary is of a WNBA. Mm -hmm. like, no, I get it. Two oh, seventy, no something like that. Something crazy. Something I, like I get it. I it's you, just the money. The money cool. comes from a. The money comes from a different place, so that's why they can do that. That's why they can do that. Um, so, G, you mentioned, uh, and uh, if you know anything about basketball, WNBA or not, now you know that Caitlin Clark is was a near-unanimous um, WNBA Rookie of the Year. She had an incredible season. And let me say this first because it's huge. She, uh, she set the record for most turnovers in a season, set the record for most turnovers, I think, in a WNBA debut game. She had 10. Um, I think she had the highest turnover average ever. Like she was terrible in terms of protecting the basketball. And as a point guard, that's one of the most important things you need to do. Right. Mm. So I want to make sure I make that clear. Now, that said, mm. she also had an incredible year. She won rookie of the year, as I said, all rookie team, mm. most points by a point guard in one season in NBA history, most double doubles by a rookie guard in WNBA history, most points by a rookie WNBA history, most assists by a rookie WNBA history. First. WNBA rookie to record two triple doubles, first triple double by a rookie, WNBA history, first player in WNBA history to be named player of the month and rookie of the month in the same month, first player with 20 points, 15 assists, and five plus rebounds in a game, four-time rookie of the month, three-time Eastern Conference player of the week, WNBA rookie single season scoring record, WNBA single season record for assists, WNBA single season rookie record for assists, WNBA single season rookie record for three pointers. As you can man. see, Dude, like had, that's uh, an extensive year, right? resume, man. Extensive God. resume, right? So I, I I totally get it, rookie of the year and Jeez. all that. But now, but see, here's the problem, right? For all the stuff she did, 
we have the other problem with certain segments of the media kind of causing dissension, right? So remember when she was still in college, you had Diana Taurasi's comments talking about, uh, what is it? Um, like reality is coming or something to that effect yeah. Um, yeah. before she came out. And, mm -hmm. you know, they took it and ran with it. Oh, Diana Taurasi is this and her. She's downplaying her game. No, she was just saying like, like any other league, when you come into the league, you might've dominated in college, but now you're playing with grownups. Now this is real deal. This is nobody's got to go to class. Here. Nobody's got to yep. study for exams. This is people, this is what they do all day, every day to feed their families, right? So this is mm -hmm. a totally different situation. And we saw so much of the difficulty Caitlin Clark had in terms of getting used to the physicality, in terms of getting used to the defense, in terms of trying to figure out how and where to get her shot off, not being able to take all those logo threes that she took in, in college, not having that super green light to do whatever she wanted to do. And you had, you have, you know, some fake narrative pushed by members of the media saying that, oh, the, the players in the WNBA were jealous and they hate Caitlin Clark uh, because she's white, because she's heterosexual, because she's getting it. No, it's not that. Right. Nobody. I, I don't think any I wouldn't even say any of those women were jealous or they hated Caitlin. That's not true. I think they were just saying, hey, we've been here welcome. all the time. Right. Welcome. We've been. Well, that too. Right. <laughs> they, gave, they gave her the welcome that rookies get when they go into a league of professional athletes. And I think and that doesn't saying, get talked about enough. I that's think right. That's where the conversation should end. I, I, I think Honestly, so. Honestly, where it should end. I think so. If you watch sports good enough or mm -hmm. long enough and you see the that's next right. talent coming out of high school. Yes. When they get to college, what do you think they're doing in college? Right. Okay, well, well, come on, freshman. Hey, freshman. You get, you, you're going to get right. beat up. Yes. You're getting beat up. Fresh you meat is what it. they used to call it. Fresh meat. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. It's the same thing for professional sports. You come from mm -hmm. college and you were you were that guy in college. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. You were the man. Okay, bet. All right. Welcome. Do you think you're going to walk it's in a, here? So welcome to reality. Yeah. Like, I, right. That, like, and that, they're taking competitive nature or, like, you know, things that have been going on for years. It's fresh mm -hmm. meat. Like, bro, you, you're, yeah. in my, you're in my house now. That's right. Listen, I've been here already. I built That's my right. I've, I've established myself. I'll be damned mm -hmm. if you come up in here and you start raining threes from the three, uh, from right. 30 feet. Off yes. in a chin check, you shoulder check mm -hmm. you. What yeah. um uh what what player? I'm I'm trying to remember. Um uh it was uh, I think it was it wasn't Iverson, but somebody tried to do the do the uh the uh between the legs, it was against a player. I, I can't remember the name, but he tried to throw it between the legs in, in an mm -hmm. NBA game, and mm -hmm. bro just clotheslined him and said, Nah, not here. We're not doing that. Not here. This ain't college, bro. Yeah, this you're not gonna be out here like, have people look stupid. We're not gonna yeah. do that. And I think right, that, that right. treatment is being confused with jealousy. And hate. yes, That's yes, been doing, we've been doing that for years, man. That's now, right. Next, the second, the third dude. season, it's gonna dull down. Be like, okay, you earned you earned your stripes, girl. Mm -hmm. Right. Welcome right. to the welcome to the right. league. You know what I mean? Now, so, but now we're still not gonna let you do just whatever you want to do out here, oh, but precisely. you know, you earned your stripes, right? So precisely. Nino says it was a mix of jealousy in there, and Nino, I'm gonna disagree. I don't think that was the case. I think again, there was some. I think there's a slight difference, right? There's some frustration in that. They're saying, hey, we've been grinding here all this time and it took, you know, her coming in and now you want to pay attention to us. We're going to show you that she's not what you think she is. And again, I think there's nothing wrong with her being a catalyst. We talked about a catalyst earlier, but yeah. that doesn't mean that the other players that have been putting in work all this time weren't outstanding players. Right. I mentioned Maya Moore. I thought I think Maya Moore is Peace. one of the best female it's basketball players. I've probably ever my seen. favorite. Yeah. No, yeah. And, and realistically. I think Juju Watkins is like the next, next evolution of Maya Moore. You know what I'm saying? I think she's she's that. And boy, whoo, Juju. When she gets in the league, bro, watch out, bro. Man. Oh, right. I can't wait. I'm, I'm right. definitely tuning in to Morgan. I mean, yes. I watch WNBA now. Right. I definitely, like when she gets there, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm too, that Caitlin Clark game against Juju Watkins is going to be. Oh, that's going to be crazy. It's, it's going to be crazy. Be and so, show. you know, so the next oh, thing is. Games until, until Caitlin get pregnant. It's all funny games until Caitlin get pregnant. And she, she'll miss a year. She'll have her kid. She'll get back in shape and she'll come back. Skylar Diggins Smith did it. She, she won't be the first or the last. It's no thing. You know, yeah. that's what Skylar women do. What, they two, they got about two championships, I think. Two or three? Uh, I think two. I want to say two. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, so, so next up, right? I, I've heard some people talk about how um, journalists, the media is partly to blame for all this. And yes, there's some blame to be had, right? But my problem is this, right? Only purists don't understand that storylines are part of sports. And I think I talked about this with you guys. Storylines are key to sports because most fans are not purists. Most fans are not purists. 
the leagues don't market themselves to purists. The no. leagues market themselves to the casual fan because there's way more of them, right? So when you look at the purist, the purist is looking at the X and O's. The purist is looking at movement. The purist is looking at skill set. Where is, you know, um, is when when the player is driving, do they have their shoulder at hip level of the defender? Um, they, they're looking at the footwork when they drop step, when they reverse pivot, so on and so forth. We talked about In all between that, right? lines, yep. Right. Purist is looking at all that. But the average fan or the average viewer, listener, whatever, is not paying attention for that. And so storylines are how we bridge. Yeah, we did talk about this. Storylines are how we bridge the game for the average slash casual fan. And I think it's important to understand that that's necessary. And I'm going to go back to the Magic Johnson and uh, Larry Bird example, right, that we talked about earlier. Mm. As great as those guys were as players, we know, um, I don't know where you guys have them. I have both of them in my top five all time. I think most people have them in their top 10. Wherever they fall, that's fine, right? Um, you guys have Magic and Bird in your top 10 all time? Top 10, Magic? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You have Bird in there? Ah, top 15, selfish. though? Top 15, yes. though? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. cool. Yes. So, I mean, <laughs> top, top 15 out of 5,000 players who've ever played, like, that's still pretty Five damn first. good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, G, I'm fine. I'm, me, Steph Curry? I no, you said top 30. I have them, Oh, top I have 30, them, gotcha. I have them both in my top five, but so be it. Um, that said, as great as they were as basketball players, it would be nonsensical for us to believe that the storyline had nothing to do with how they connected with the fan base. It also would be ridiculous for us to believe that the storyline had nothing to do with how they were able to lift the league. Because remember, we talked about how they matched up in the national championship game, and that was a huge thing. And then Bird goes to Boston, right? The blue-collar, hardworking East Coast town. Magic goes to L.A., Showtime, Glitz and Glamour. And mm -hmm. both towns, excuse me, both towns perfectly fit these guys' personalities, right? And then, as such... The way they played basketball on their respective teams, it all fit perfectly. Max. So the story all comes together, right? So mm -hmm. the storyline, I'm not going to say it's just as important as what happens between the lines, but it's a major part of it. And that's what the NBA was able to sell. That's what the NBA media was able to sell. And it all helped to take the mm -hmm. NBA to the place that we see it in now, right? And so storylines are important. Now, when you, when you use storylines and narratives to lie, and come up with stuff that's not true to push something, that's something totally different. But we can't act like storylines are not a part of sports and they won't always be, right? I, I think that's super important. So now the, the next part of this, I know this is this is a long segment, but the next part of this, I, I told you it's got a lot of tentacles. Um, so we recently um, saw Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever get eliminated, I think in the first round of the playoffs by, uh, was it the Connecticut Sun? I believe Connecticut Sun. Right. And so one of the big things in the elimination game in game two, DJ A. Carrington, the, the main defender on Caitlin Clark, I guess was going for a strip. I have, let me see, I got it here. She was going for a strip and she comes down and basically she catches Caitlin Clark in the eye. Now to me, I could be wrong. It looked like she deliberately raked her. L look at this from the angle. I yeah. Think, yeah I, right, I think she down, deliberately down. got her in the eye. I think that probably could have been avoided. An elbow, I'm, I'm okay with, you know, uh, even a trip, uh, whatever. But you deliberately going to someone's eye, like, I don't think that's cool. Um, G, you making a face. Did that look deliberate to you or not? No, I, I did. Didn't. Say again? It did. It looked like she was defending the ball and a hand came. Hmm. Okay. I mean, we've it seen people like defend the ball time and it time. It wasn't like a straight jab. It was just like she well, turned I mean, We've seen a lot of people contest shots throughout the years, and I, I don't know how many times I've seen somebody go in somebody's eye, but cool. So in my estimation, and again, I could very well be wrong. That's very possible. It looked to me like it was intentional. But regardless, after the game, uh, longtime sports journalist Christine Brennan, she writes for the USA Today, and she is widely regarded as an outstanding, well-researched, fair sports journalist, and she is a big advocate of uh, women and women's sports, right? Cool. So she was doing her job as a journalist. She was inter interviewing DJ, uh, DJ A. Carrington, and she specifically asked her, hey, did you, um, did you deliberately, she didn't say you did, why did you? No, she asked, did you deliberately poke Caitlin Clark in the eye? And she was like, no, why would I do that? So she said, cool. So then there was a part uh, later in the game, like in the fourth quarter, where DJ A. Carrington and her teammate 
appeared to be mocking, poking someone in the eye and laughing. Now, um, it was later explained by those two that they were doing the, uh, what is it, the uh, Carmelo three to the dome. Uh, I don't know how that, but whatever. So that that's what they said. So I can only go by what they said. But the point is, um, Christine Brennan asked that question. Yeah, the WNBA is more physical than the NBA. You're absolutely absolutely right, G. Um, yeah, so Christine Brennan asked that question, and apparently it set off the WNBA uh, Players Association, which I thought was totally absurd. Now, listen to this. She says, but we will. So the the WNBA Players Association made an IG post and it said, but we will take this moment now to stand up for them and the rest of our members, every single one of them, because we, we call BS to unprofessional members of the media like Christine Brennan. You are not fooling anyone. This so-called interview in the name of journalism was a blatant attempt to bait a professional athlete into participating in a narrative that is false and designed to fuel racist, homophobic and misogynistic vitriol on social media. You cannot hide behind your tenure. You have abused your privilege and do not deserve to be do not deserve the credentials issued to you. And you are certainly not entitled to any interviews with members of this union or any other athlete in sport. We can we call on USA Today Network to review its principles of ethical conduct for newsrooms and address what we believe is a violation of several core principles, including seeking and reporting the truth. USA Today Sports should explain why a reporter with clear bias and ulterior motives was assigned to cover the league. We also urge the league to review its policies and take measures to prevent such issues, protecting the integrity of the game and its players. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? She didn't accuse DJ Carrington of anything. She asked the question. She asked the question. Who, who yeah. worst their salt would ask. Did you? Not why did you? Not I saw you. What were you thinking? Did you? Right? She asked the question. Because one of the things that a, that a journalist is supposed to do is be a bridge, a conduit between the fan and, and the athletes and um, the coaches, right? The, the sport and the fan. Because the fan doesn't have direct access to get the information that they want. So the journalist has to ask those questions for the fan. And so I'm sure there are lots of fans out there wondering, did you do that on purpose? So the journalist is going to ask. And again, Christine Brennan, widely regarded sports writer, longtime USA Today employee, award winner, and champion of women's sports. Why would she go out there and try to, like, come on, man. This is absurd. And this is why I titled this thing WNBA Drama, and there's so much going on. I just... I can't understand this. And when I tell you, like, just prepping this segment was exhausting for me. And I'm, I'm getting it tired. It sounds like it. Bro, it's, it's, a <laughs> lot. it's a lot. You know? I mean, I, come on, man. <laughs> Blatant attempt to bait a professional athlete in a participation of a narrative that is false and designed to fuel racist, homophobic, misogynistic vitriol. All I asked was, did you poke in the eye? But thank you. Thank you. Wait, wait, did I say what color the bra she had on? No, yes, just, right. No, I just but did you did you try to poke an eye? Yeah, like, it could have been part of your game plan, man. Get that girl out of here. Right, right. This is absurd. <laughs> Absolutely absurd. So, yeah, like, man. this is the stuff that's frustrating me. Like, this this is what tells me, like, you, you being the WNBA, were not prepared for the rapid growth that you so desperately craved. It's coming to you, but you think that everything's gonna be, you know, rainbows and sunshine. And it's not like that. Everything in life has two sides. So with the good of the rapid growth is going to come some negativity. And so apparently was that like, the like, entire story or was it just a sound or just was it just that one question? Because very rarely do they just ask one question. So she asked no, that question why? and then she asked the follow up of were you and your teammate laughing at Caitlin Clark getting poked in the eye? She asked the follow up. Right. So, so first she said, no, I didn't deliberately poke her in the eye. And then she said again. Did you and your team, were you and your teammate laughing about her getting poked in the eye? So those are the two questions that she asked DJ Nate Carrington. And so obviously you see it started that firestorm. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? This is absurd. It's do, absolutely you think, absurd. Do, you, do you think this is a ploy for us? To do I'm, what? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think here because, you know, of course, Kate okay. Nicole got eliminated. So now you don't have yes. anything else to say. Like, Kate Nicole can't carry you for the rest of the season. No, right? no. But and now do you think it's there? Off. There's a the, a ploy for you we to have this conversation, mm. okay? Like, all right, now we got something to talk about. Like, all right, let's mm -hmm. make this more drama because what I, I tell you all the time, like, leagues thrive off drama. Viewers, yes. like, people love drama. I order reality shows and things like mm -hmm. that. 
drama is cooking. Like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. Caitlyn is eliminated. But if we have her in some type of drama, some type of conversation, now we can get still get the views, still get the clicks, still get the mentions, still have the conversations. Do you think that that mm-hmm. you know is possibly something else that's happening? So honestly, I, I can't speak for anyone else, but I don't think so. And the reason why yeah. is because it's a women's league, right? So they don't want to feed into the stereotypes of women being drama filled or women being full of emotion. They want to sell their league and market their league on the quality of their players and the quality of their play. And I respect that. And so I I want to believe that they wouldn't take that cheap route and say, hey, drama sells, right? I want to believe that because it would feed right into a lot of negative stereotypes about women. That's I mean, that's my yeah, thought. We, we have a lot of drama in the NBA and NFL and stuff like that too. So I, women don't, I don't under- stray too far. I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> I do, but but do you but don't you think that it would be taken differently where women are involved? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because uh, of the stereotypes. I can, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I think. G, what do you think? You think maybe this is, you know, trying to hook for more attention? Completely off base. Nah, I don't. I think. Um, I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't think so. It was just a question. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait, Caitlyn is eliminated, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So how can we keep Caitlyn in conversation? Right now that she's gone, you know, and Caitlin so, needs to break. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> does. The girl, the girl earned it. The and, girl and, earned the break. And listen, if we're real, she needs a break. We can let her live, and let's pay attention to this young lady, Asia. the recently crowned, uh, was it three-time MVP now, Asia Wilson, who is an absolute monster. And you know, watching her play, she's got it all. She got the mid-range. She can shoot the three. Dominant in the post. Look at that. Boom. Got you. Mm. Um, look, step through. Love it. Oh, dream Ooh, look shake. at that. Straight dream shake. Uh. Right? You know what I'm saying? Asia Wilson has it all. She is so deserving of MVP. I think average 27 yeah, and 12 this year, two and a half blocks. Uh, most rebounds in a season. Oh, get that out of here. Most not today. <laughs> She's your finger <laughs> wag. Um, but yeah, most most rebounds in a season in WNBA history. Um most that points was already in just broken by Angel Reese history. couldn't let her live. Well, Angel Reese got hurt, remember? Yeah, and so I'm just saying, know, like it was just broken oh, okay. by Angel Reese. Yeah. Well, was she supposed to stop rebounding? <laughs> She's like, nah, <laughs> hell no. Nah. But but no, um, Angel Reese is without a doubt the best women's player in the world. Like she's that freaking good. And Asia so Wilson. I'm I'm watching her, Asia Wilson. Thank you. I'm watching her um earlier today, and then you know, going through, and you know, I'm looking for B-roll for this for this segment and all that, and I'm I'm watching different stuff and I found myself watching like entire quarters of of her playing she reminds me a lot the way she plays of a female David Robinson and it doesn't hurt that she's also left-handed right so she's a dominant shot blocker dominant rebounder can play the post can put it on the floor has the mid-range all the way out to three she is a lot like a female David Robinson like her skill set is super super complete and I think even though she's a three-time MVP like you watch that that little clip that I put there and I think, you know, a lot of that is the frustration that many of these um, WNBA players are feeling because they're like, yo, she we've had these of of players all this time, but you weren't paying attention. But again, just because sometimes you need a catalyst doesn't mean that the players before weren't great. And so uh, I think I think whew, I think that's the kind of the, the, the last piece that I had on that. But. It's, it's something I've really been I've been listening to so much commentary on this thing. And honestly, I've been I've been ducking the topic because I'm like, there's so much going on. And I'm sure there's a whole ton of stuff I didn't even get to in regards to the WNBA and, and the different things going on. But I had to I had to get this stuff off my chest and I had to really um, go ahead and, and address it. So uh, that that's all I have on this topic. And I will let you guys give your finishing thoughts before. We open it up and hopefully get a couple calls on it. Well, I wanted to say, you know, the first step in therapy is just letting it all out. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. You know, letting it all out, telling the truth, being forefront, being honest, mm-hmm. you know, it's therapeutic. Like now you can breathe. I saw your yeah, show. It's like, yeah, first you start off the show like this. Like the more you let more out, like it started lowering down, lowering down, lowering yeah, down. Eventually yeah. you stop banging over your mic. You know, so I mean, you, you finally got it out, out off your chest, man. So I'm, I'm glad you did it. But no, no, serious, this man. Um, yes, I, I, I hate this for Caitlin Clark. That's from the, the beginning topic. Um, that it's being 
uh, things are happening that she can't control. Like you can't yeah. control the actions of yeah. your fans. You can't control yeah. the, the actions of, um, of you know, people. I mean, some of your fans. I'm not going to say all of your fans, but some of your fans right. that act in a certain way. She, I mean, mm-hmm. she can come out and just say, I can't, I don't condone that behavior. And she has- what more can she do? I mean, right. Yeah, no, 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 no. what more can she do? I can't mm-hmm. physically go out here and stop millions of Americans um, from doing right. this, from thinking yeah. this way, from saying this, um, mm-hmm. from publicly coming out in this in this regard. So, you mm-hmm. know, I, I just feel bad for her, man. I just say, you know, tell her to continue to keep ball and keep doing what she's doing. She's doing a great thing right. for her sport. Um, she's going to mm-hmm. be, well, like I said, she is a catalyst. And what I think it is a growing lead. The numbers show it. Um, mm-hmm. And, I, you know, for the second part, I don't think it's jealousy. I think that the, the WNBA so is going to embrace her next year. Now it's going to be, hey, you know, last year was you a rookie. We just want yeah. to show you it's going to be that's it. out here. You yeah, know what I mean, so and I think that that's a tone that that's going to be that's going to be changed next year. So it's just allowing it the time. Mm-hmm. Dee Watkins comes in next season. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm proud. It's, I'm, Not I'm next happy season. To after, after next season, after I think she's got to play at least three years. Okay. Yeah. It's go. Oh, yeah. Last year was a freshman season. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um. So. You know, but still, you know, I think they're 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 heading a great direction, man. A, mm-hmm. a better direction, I'll mm-hmm. say. Um, you know, what what they're doing and yeah. Um now we you know, because nobody knew who Asia Wilson was, and nobody knew she was a back to back champion like that. The purists so, you know, knew, right? The, the purists purist knew, you know what I right. mean? But and like that's, the that's the, not the, the right. viewership finally got wind of it. Like now mm-hmm. you go back, you look at her highlights, like God dang man, that girl's tough. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah, I think it's good, man. It's good. Yeah. What well, one thing I wanted to one thing I've forgotten, then I'll I'll get to you, G. Um, people are complaining about the racist, you know, tweets and and posts online and all that. And of course, you're never going to advocate for that. That's that's degenerate yeah. behavior in my estimation. That's terrible. But unfortunately, like with with fame and notoriety, that stuff is going to come too. And so, do we really think that both Larry Bird and Magic Johnson didn't get a ton of <laughs> racist mail sent to the Lakers and sent to the Celtics back then? No, there was no email and no tweeting, but like people would write into newspapers with that stuff. People would, you know, find your address and send it to your house. People would send it to your organization. So let's not act like this is new stuff. Yeah, they shouldn't have to deal with that, but that's part of what comes with the rise in notoriety. It is what it is. And again, you shouldn't have to deal with it, but that's part of it. And that, that that's one of my biggest things, man. You can't want more attention but expect that the attention is all going to be good gee go ahead man i don't know i don't know how i feel about this topic um it's just wnba dramas drama everywhere right it's just one person's view on what the wnba is compared to what it really is um these girls these young these ladies should definitely get paid more money um there's no way you're gonna tell me that they fill in seats all across the, the country um, everybody's going to these games and in places where they're not even really a bunch of superstars that, I mean, it's showing up. The, 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 the viewership has went up. The, the ticket sales has went up, has went up and, you know, they supported or they, when they went to the Olympics, they did their thing. Um, you said that, that, you know, when you have your last point that you made in reference to my original point of them, should, they should have security for them. Um, this is you selling tennis shoes. They sell tennis shoes. I mean, your name, you on TV, um, but you can't afford to pay these young ladies a suitable salary. So now um, the league get, is not selling tennis shoes. Of course not the league. Of course not. the league. But I'm just saying the endorsements are there, but the endorsements isn't the same as it would be if that was a male. What I'm saying is, is like there should be. There should be places, things in place so that they can. Let me go back. Let me take a step back. Mm-hmm. When these two young ladies was in um, in college, right? Angel Reese yeah. and uh, Caitlin Clark, right? When they was in, in college, they was making, uh, what was their NIL deals? It was something, it was a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, like yeah, three million, did. right? Yeah. And then you, mm-hmm. then you, then you join this, this, this ranky dink ass uh, league and they only pay you like, a fraction of that, right? Like you, you still got you still bringing in all these. The views are still there. Like the, the all these people are still showing up at this game. But now you telling me like, oh well, this is the price. This is what the, this is what it costs to play this game. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just not. It's just not. It's just not the same, right? Like and to say that, oh, because they haven't spun a profit, that it's just it's just their fault. Like I don't. I don't. That, agree that's with that's, that's fault. economics, bro. I, I, that's that's economics. Economics. I don't. I don't agree with the way it's set up and it's designed. 
And I think that Caitlin Clark could have came out day one and kind of condemned those statements and people pulling up and push up. But she didn't. She waited and waited and waited and then decided to do it, you know, after all the pressure was like, you need to say something. But I don't like the money just got like the viewership just got here. You know, what I mean, I think that comes, that, that comes exactly. with a new no, no. CBA. I mean, not CBA. They probably call it something different. But a uh, 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 new meeting with the, with the head board on you know what we get paid and things like that. The deals are just now starting to cook. I mean, if you can't, mm-hmm. I can't pay you if I'm not myself making a profit. Right. I think that's just that's. I don't know where the money's supposed to come from. Like, like, how am I supposed to pay you? They had this year the amount of viewership they had this year that they can't like do spot bonuses, and it's not it's not every team because we see the the aces who's been winning. They, mm-hmm. they pay their players, right? They pay their players. But these other teams, for whatever well, the reason, city, the city of Las Vegas gives them money on top of yes. their WNBA salaries. So yes. again, yes. that's they value that's, them. That's what that's I'm saying. Outside they value money, them. right? So we can't we can't blame the WNBA for that. We can't say WNBA players should get paid more until the WNBA gross profit margin increases. They can't pay the players more until they get bigger TV deals. They can't pay the players more. Like, where's the money going to come from? I'm now, always going to advocate for, you know, people to get paid. Uh, I mean, you're that's not wrong. You're not wrong. No, it's that's just fine. Fine. I'm I'm always you know, I'll, I'll make them That's fine. But the money is going on. It does. It, I mean, it's it's going somewhere. The money is going somewhere. The money that they generate. Yeah, to get us out of the red. Somewhere. <laughs> Right. <laughs> to get us out of the red. Right. They've been in the red for 28 years. The NBA is the only reason the WNBA still exists. But it's all good. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a mm-hmm. pretty bad situation to walk into, right? Like, you go from making, say, three to five million in NIL deals, mm-hmm. and then it's like, oh, yeah, do I play basketball or do I just go do something else? It's something you've been, you've been doing your whole life. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't know, man. I, I I know there was some. I think I think Caitlyn sold her likeness, uh, for like five mil or something. Or Steph was trying to buy from her. Somebody was trying to give her like five mil for, um, uh, her, uh, for like everything that she's done so far, like her name and all that stuff. They was trying to pay her out. There's something that I read that that's happening, and so there's people around her. Like your boy, uh, what's his name? Ah, I can't even think of his name, man. Um. Uh, the dude that Stephen A. called to be. What's his name? Uh, Whitlock. What's his name? Oh, Whitlock. 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 Jason Whitlock. Yeah, he, he said that he, 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 said she was, <laughs> yeah, he said he said she's like Kunta Kente. Let's think. Yeah, that was crazy. That was a, that was a crazy Look, man. Jason like, Whitlock says some interesting things. He, but that's a like, hard a stretch. Big, <laughs> a big stretch. I wouldn't need, I, that's not even worth addressing to me. I think it's so absurd. Yeah, he's so, not always man, wrong, but, but that was a that was an absurd. Sometimes, analogy. man, like like sometimes, and I'm jumping to a, a different subject. But sometimes it's these media folks, man, they be reaching, bro. Yes, like, that's yeah, correct. They be reaching, man, and, that's and correct. It's like there is no QA, right? Like, or if there is, like, we can't like get bent out of shape when somebody believes that somebody is like overstepping their bounds and doing too much, right? We, we can't, we can't, because that dude was doing too much, man. Like that's too. I'm much. With you. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but that's all I got on that topic, man. I don't really have anything else. Just all right. You know, it's the WNBA. We got some really good basketball. You said mm-hmm. Juju, she can in. She gonna she gonna cook the cook the league for a mm-hmm. little bit. Interesting yeah. to see how uh how everybody come back, man. Um, yeah, it's also interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see. To your point, like what does Caitlin Clark do to improve this offseason? Does she continue to get physically stronger? Does she become a better defender? Because right now she plays no defense. She's like a cone. She does she does she put work into becoming a defender? Does she put work into breaking her tendencies in terms of like always dribbling left for that off the dribble uh of three point pull up? Right? Does she get better in pulling up, going right, et cetera, et cetera? She's still an outstanding passer, but teams are gonna start um making defenses to cut off her passing lanes. So she's gonna have to you know further work on her vision and pass better with both hands in in different spots on the floor. So um you know. This is it. Great rookie year, but now let's see if she gets any better. Um, right now, I'm going to put the number in the chat, 904-219-8264. I know we don't have very many people listening. Um, for those of y'all who stayed with me, I know it was a lot, but I, I had to I had to go ahead and, and uh, put that out yeah. there. But, yeah, give us a call. Um, it's scrolling on the bottom as well, 904-219-8264. If you have any thoughts on this uh, WNBA Caitlin Clark topic, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. 
Just while, while, while we're waiting, um, I had a mm-hmm. piece that I just saw that I just pulled up that you know kind of will make G feel a little bit better. Mm-hmm. This summer, the NBA and WNBA agreed that a new media's right deal with ESPN, NBC, and Amazon Prime mm-hmm. Video beginning in the fall of 2025 for the men and the summer, men and the summer of 2026 for mm-hmm. the women. The deal will at least triple the value of the WNBA's current one and potentially could be roughly six times larger. This means the WNBA will have mm-hmm. a lot more money to pay their players. On an average salary, Caitlin Clark salary is two hundred thousand dollars per season, and she just signed a Nike deal that's reported twenty eight million. Mm-hmm. So the the tide is coming. The tide is coming. I think you know with the with the viewership and now that you have you know sponsor deals that the the WNBA can eat off of. Like okay, now mm-hmm. we have more mm-hmm. money coming in to help us. Now we can pay y'all. Like it's it's not just you know we don't want to pay y'all. It's like. Man, we're, we're like we're borrowing money right now right, <laughs> like, exactly keep, keep this thing afloat like i can't pay yes. you more when right. i'm already borrowing from from the nba and what the, what they're doing over there so that's yeah. what i think tomorrow on the lines that's what bruce meant by the, the nba is carrying wnba mm-hmm. because the wnba has been borrowing money for so long mm-hmm. that the wnba is in the red they they still owe mm-hmm. now like now i gotta try to figure out how to pay y'all more that's what it's just not realistic at the moment but you know 2025 2026 look like the tide is turning Thanks to you know the elevation of women's basketball. So yep. Yeah. Nino, what's good, man? What you got? What what's good? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh yeah, man. I say I, I disagree with most of this, like 90% of everything y'all are saying as far as the economic things, like they gotta get out the red. And for the most part, I don't think a lot of people understand that the business side of things, like, it's a good thing that Caden Clark and Angel is getting out of the list. That don't mean that they are the best players, the top players in the league. I think people are always confused, but just to tell you the best player, you should be getting the most. Mm-hmm. That's not how marketing works. No, I don't think the not. women were prepared for that. And the only thing I say where I said that I see envy is I don't think it's malicious, like most people saying, like, oh, she tried to bump her. That's basketball. I'm not saying really as far as the players on the court. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for most, uh, some players on the court that's been there and a lot of old players. I look at it, I, I use this, like, if you built a house, right? I don't even know what it takes to build a house. You built the whole house except for the roof. And I come put the roof on there and everybody just like the roof so much. Everybody like, oh, we know the roof. It's gonna be something in your spirit. It's like, wait a minute, this, this MF, I've been did all this work, <laughs> right? And you, and you come in now. They, they just talking about, and the, you know, the crazy part is, it's a lot of them women better than Caitlyn Clark, and it's true. Like yeah. you're rookie, and yeah. You're better. Mm-hmm. That's no, true. that's true. So I, I think the end, especially like Enrique, uh, Enrique, he's so underrated, but. Oh, oh, um, from Dallas? Dallas? From Dallas. Yeah, Enrique oh, Gubin oh, Waller. Yeah, she's a problem. She is a bucket. And we know what Adrian Wilson is. Oh, so yeah. If it was about talent, Adrian Wilson would have been had the same, the same, like, fan, fan as Angel Reese and Caden Clark. So it's more to it. Why? That's why the, I said the jealousy part. I don't think it's like, I'm not trying to say they malicious. They, like, people say they're trying to hurt us. She get a bump or a hard foul. This makes it up. I'm just saying it's something it's something they spirit in, in your spirit going just be like, wait a minute. You, you can see it from the older players. Are you see it in the NBA? Shaq said, Well, it was Rudy Gobert making Shaq money. He might have some facts about it, but it's still where we from, we call that hatred. You know, you can't just I don't think that's hatred though. This man making that money. I don't think that's hatred. You can't hatred. be mad if he's making that money. No, you but it's saying the players and it, it isn't to, to your money. point though, you like but see, what Shaq says is, in, in regards to Gobert, remember, he said, you make it 250 million, show me 250 million. That's what he said. He it's has, not, he it's not he, I'm he mad that you're them. getting 250 million. It said, show me why you're getting 250 million. I, I'm not mad at that. It's the same. He tried. If, if Rudy Gobert wasn't trying, he's trying to play. It's not his fault that they gave, that's the market that he can get that money. Mm. It's not his fault. That's what I'm saying. That's what makes Shaq a little hater. Because he, because he know if he was playing in this time, as dumb as he was, he'd be making 
LeBron and and Steph money. He's mm-hmm. he's still here. It's the time that you played in, Shaq. You would make more money than Wilt, now. Yeah, yeah, it's no the doubt. Same thing. No, I, I think yeah, he's, he's saying he earned that dollar. Right. He's like, saying I earned the highest pay. Right. Like, it's not that you're making more than me. If you're a max player, play like a max player. Play like that's a max how player. I took it. Yeah. That's how I took it as well. I understand. What I'm saying is, I, I, that's why I say I understand what he's trying to say. Mm-hmm. But he's going to come off as hatred if you talk okay. about this man. Well, now you can just say, hey, he ain't playing up to, he ain't playing like he's supposed to play. When you go talk about he making this much money, he's really doing this. Like, like y'all lying. Well, I think the women is blowing it. I think y'all saying it. They, they, I love the magic and bird compared. Bird, they doing the groundwork, mm-hmm. but they can not. They trying to knock magic and bird off, off before they before MJ comes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause Juju on the way now. Yeah, yes, the game indeed. Gonna keep going. The eyes is gonna keep going. Mm-hmm. I agree. But they trying to, cause I think the only reason they don't like. I mean, I, I don't think uh, the only reason why you don't see as much. Uh, talk about Angel Reese is because they got Caden Clark. Because I don't think they like Angel Reese making that much money. Uh, if she makes it either, but they got Caden Clark to follow back home. Just wait mm-hmm. to get just wait to do to them getting in and yeah, that man. money come in. You're going to really see something. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, for the most part, I agree with that with what y'all saying, man. Love the show. Man, I you appreciate know, you not, always. Not, not always, LeBron, you know. Don't speak of thy name, man. Don't speak of thy name. Man. Don't don't speak of thy name. Don't speaketh <laughs> thy hate. name. It starts a conversation. <laughs> it's like saying Voldemort and Harry right. Potter. All right, we don't <laughs> know who names shall names not be named. Right, right. <laughs> and that was my last. This my last. This my last bone to kick. Now, okay. Why is, why <laughs> is Baltimore and Cincinnati at the bottom? And we already talked about the film. I mean, come on now. We got to do better, fellas. Why, All right. why is Baltimore right. down there at the bottom? You know we what? Do That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> That's fair, Nina. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate uh, yeah. you so much, man. Thank you for calling, man. Oh, yeah. All right, later. <laughs> man, Nino always got great calls, man. That dude. I Funny. love it. Yeah, Funny, yeah. Man. Funny, Super Funny. supportive, man. He's, he's, he's a good guy. Good guy. <laughs>